Hi, this is Manos Brilakis from the Minneapolis Heart Institute and the Cardiovascular Innovations Foundation presenting case 54 for the manual of percutaneous coronary interventions. This is a case illustrating knuckle wiring for ST elevation myocardial infarction. The patient presented with an ST segment elevation inferior MI. Right radial axis was obtained and diagnostic angiography demonstrated significant disease in the medial AD however with preserved undergrade flow. There was some retrograde feeling of the PDA as well as, as the posterior lateral vessel. Injection of the right coronary artery did confirm an occlusion of the mid right coronary with a large intraluminal filling defect suggestive of thrombus. What should be the next step? There are two key components of managing large intracoronary thrombus. The first one is uh, medications to prevent propagation of the thrombus and the coagulation and antiplatelets. Heparin was given in this patient. We also gave the patient eptifibatide and ticagrelor. The next and main step is to restore coronary flow. In this particular case, we did not have undergrade flow. Therefore, the first step is to advance a guide wire through the thrombus. And then the question is, what to do next if you have a large coronary thrombus? Sometimes, if there is non-going ischemia, observation with ongoing antithrombotic management could help dissolve some of the thrombus and then facilitate subsequent PCI. However, in most cases, like in our patient who has ongoing symptoms, the next step is to perform some type of thrombectomy followed by balloon and stents. And this is the wiring. We did uh, use an Amplatz 1 guide catheter, which is our standard guide for performing PCI of the right coronary through radial axis. And in vessels like this that are very tortuous, sometimes it may be safer and easier to wire by creating a knuckle and advancing the knuckle through the area of thrombus. This was again a workhorse Sion Blue guide wire. And um, after a couple attempts, the loop nicely um, advanced uh, distally. This could potentially decrease the risk of perforation and also the loop is more likely to follow the natural curvature of the vessel versus selecting a side branch and causing a potential perforation. The next question is what to do. There was still a significant amount of intracoronary thrombus and the options are to perform balloon angioplasty or some type of thrombectomy with the two main types being aspiration thrombectomy or using the penumbra aspiration and there is no comparative studies but in this particular case we went with aspiration thrombectomy using an export six french catheter and retrieved a large amount of both white as well as red thrombus we did multiple passes another uh, thing that can be done through the export microcatheter is to advance intracoronary vasodilators such as nicardipine as well as adenosine. This is how the vessel looked after aspiration thrombectomy. There was restoration of undergrade flow, however there remained large areas of disease which could represent spasm and or residual thrombs. So the next step here is administer vasodilators nitroglycerin and nincardipine and this helped uh, increase the size of the vessel and improve the flow. We now have a good T3 undergrade flow. We do not see any obvious intraluminal filling residual defects. So in this patient we placed a 3 by 38 millimeter DS that was post with a 3.5 millimeter balloon and that gave a nice result. However, there remained a significant lesion distally despite giving adenosine and nitroglycerin and that, would co that was covered with another 2.75 by 20 millimeter drug diluting stand, providing a nice result with T3 flow into the right coronary artery. So several food for thought from this case. The first one is how to wire thrombosed vessels. This case illustrates that using a workhorse guide wire and advancing the tip uh, looped essential in a knuckle configuration can be a useful way and also safe for navigating through this area of thrombus with uh, low risk for perforation. Sometimes a polymer jacket wire like a Fielder FC or a Sion Black can be used instead of a workhorse, especially when the vessels are calcified. Second, 
aspiration thrombectomy, although in routine application it did not provide benefit. However, in selected cases with large thrombus burden, as was this patient, they can facilitate restoration of flow, decrease the risk of distal embolization, and can be done with various ways. Aspiration thrombectomy was effective in our particular patient. Third, in cases with large intracoronary thrombus, administering antiplatelet agents such as eptifibadide or tirofibin or cangrelor or administering vasodilators can help prevent thrombus propagation and help dilate the vessel. Fourth point, in this particular case we decided to not treat the LAD at the same setting. There are several studies that have looked at that and several other ongoing studies. However, the plan in this patient remained to return for PCI to the LAD either before discharge or shortly thereafter. Thank you very much.